Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Fronteras, a Changing America. My name is Monica Ortiz Uribe. On uh, today's show, our guest has traveled the length of the U.S.-Mexico border, from Tijuana all the way to Matamoros. He's photographing artists in this region, from painters to sculptors to poets to actors. Um, so I'd like to welcome uh, our guest. His name is Stefan Falka, um, and he just spent uh, two weeks in Germany. Um, so welcome, Stefan. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you're from Germany, from Germany but yeah. you spent two weeks in what? Ciudad Juarez. All right, all right. So tell us, tell us where you're from and, uh, and, and what you do. My story is confusing. I'm from Germany, but I live in Brooklyn. I just spent uh, two weeks in Juarez, which was uh, just one of the cities I visited along the border. As you mentioned, I was uh, traveling all the way from Tijuana to Matamoros, to Renosa, Nuevo Laredo. Juarez, I'm on my way to Nogales. So uh, what are you doing? Tell us tell us about this project that you've got along the border. The project is about artists along the U.S. The project is called La Frontera, Artists Along the U.S.-Mexican Border. And the idea behind it is, uh, there's really not a huge idea behind it. I'm German and I grew up with a big wall in my own country. And that wall came down and this wall is actually coming, still coming up. It's still being built as we speak. Um, so I was always interested in the physicality of the border. So I wanted to go to the border and see it and, 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 and understand it. But, and why, why artists? Why did you choose uh, to focus on mm, artists? Because when I moved to New York in 85, uh, ever since, I, you know, the, the, the news from the borders have never really been good. And especially in the last few years, they have been really bad. And the media always focuses on, on violent crimes. And uh, so I was saying to myself, I can't be all to the border. There's like 12 million people living in that region. They, they, they can't be all involved in, in you know, crime and, and bad uh, behavior. So I, I thought I single out artists just to show a, a, a cultural side of the border that we never really see. And a kind of, if you can call it normal life along the border, because there's a lot of people who just live, go along, you know, go about their lives. And, uh, but I can't show all that, so I singled out artists in order to okay. show the cultural side of the border. Well, and, and then so tell me, how do you, you, you get here and how do you find these artists? This is your first time along the border, right? So yeah, tell us how no, you... No, I started this project actually in 2008 in Tijuana and went back in 2009 when things were pretty bad over there too. Mm -hmm. And then I ran out of money, so I stopped for a few years, and then I had a show with my existing material in Tijuana and, and two th in the beginning of 2012, and then that jump-started the whole mm -hmm. project again. So ever since I'm kind of traveling along the border, I've spent two, three, four months now. Yeah, so, so, how, so how do you find these artists? So uh, I do a little research on the internet, which is not easy because many artists don't have websites and all that. So I just find en enough, and I also I don't really want to know what I find before I get there. So I, I just uh, research enough artists to, to get to a place and be connected already. So yeah. I have two or three uh, contacts, and then I then you know if I find somebody interesting and they tell me somebody else it, they find interesting, that usually works. So I just go from person to person, and, and it's it's amazing how the art world on the border is connected, and they all really work together, help out each other, and. That's quite unusual. I mean, they're, they're, they're really, they're really one. <laughs> and and so you're you're photographing artists. You're not limiting yourself to the Mexican side. You're focusing on both sides of the border, correct? I was actually focusing on the Mexican side. Uh, then I realized, especially in places like Matamoros and Bronzeville, there are so many uh, Mexican artists moving to the American side because of the situation or any other family situation. And there are some artists that are so so interesting that I can't really ignore them. <laughs> and the, you know, there's, there's a lot of exchange going on between the, the 
two countries. Uh, so, but but my main focus is still on the Mexican side. Okay. Well, um, let's uh, uh, let's talk about some of these artists. Um, and and to do that, I guess the best way is to bring up some of the the photos, right? Sure. Um, so let's bring up uh, let's bring up one uh, one of these photos. Um, this is tell tell us about this photo. Stephanie. That's a young artist in Tijuana. Uh, his name is Alfredo Libre Gutierrez. And he, this picture is one of the first pictures I took, and I really like it. And he portrayed American homeless people in Mexico, so that was kind of really interesting. Um, is this one of is this one of this his is one subjects? Of, yes, 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 absolutely. Did he tell you anything about him? No, we were more talking about him because in that case I didn't really meet him for long enough. Sometimes I, I usually spend half a day with the artist. Uh, I, I make sure I don't meet too many in a day, so I have enough time with them. In that case, a friend brought me over there, and, and, and we didn't have much time. But after that, we became good friends, so I got to know him a little better. But I don't know too much about the particular painting. Yeah, yeah it's a striking photo, the way the two of them are, yeah. are, 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 are standing, one sitting and one standing right next to it. Um, and what, what about, uh, what about the, his, his personality? Um, how did he get started? The, very, the, the artist, very uh -huh. open, <coughs> young. I mean, he's, he's fairly known now. I mean, he, this is already four years ago, and he kind of uh, took, took off his career. He works in, in San Diego a lot, I think, when I was in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he's one of the guys who have a, a vision and uh, a path and, and uh, you know an idea about where they're going. Ah, okay, so. okay. Well, um, let's go ahead and bring up um, uh, another photo. I understand uh, this one you took in Ciudad Juarez, right? This is actually a week ago, Ciudad Juarez, and uh, the group is called it's the Colectivo. It's called Jellyfish Colectivo, mm -hmm. and those four. four Young people, they're very young, uh, are, are just amazing. They're also, see often I meet artists on the border who, who do what they just do because I mean many of them also come, come out of a traumatic uh, period of time, right? And so there's really no, uh, often there's no, how should I say, no, no, no vision yet. It's just in the day, uh, but the, these four young people, they, I think they, they're making their way and they found a lot of people support them and in, in their business ideas, and they are just working on, on short movies and all that with their graphic designs, and they're really fantastic. They're what, stand what's, uh, tell us about the masks they're wearing. Well, that's creations of their own, and they're just, you know, <laughs> I, 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 they happen to have them, and I liked putting them onto them. Mm -hmm. So they do, they do what kind of work? You said they do... They do they a do lot of film? murals. They're all, I think all four of them are graphic artists, so they have jobs. I mean, like the most artists I meet on the border, they have some form of daytime job. Very often in the visual arts, there are graphic artists, they, they, they do lay layouts for the local newspapers and all that, mm. or advertising, and uh, rarely do they live from their art. I mean, like the first artist, I think he, he does by now, but uh, it's very, many of them tell me that it's very difficult to earn your, make a living by just that art, so they all have a related daytime job. Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, um, let's move on to the uh, to, to the next photo and, and check that one out. Um, very striking photo. This is. Tell us. This is Perla de la Rosa from Juarez. She is an actress, a theater director. She has a group, and she is a member of a group. I think it's called Taller. And sorry, I forgot the name, but. Again, Perla de la Rosa, very, very important voice of Juarez. She is an outspoken person. She, her, her theater pieces often deal with certain situations that other people don't really want to talk about with necessarily. What? Well, I want to leave that to her and uh, <laughs> have people see her theater pieces because that's another problem. There is a lot of stories that I came across that, that I cannot even tell because I don't know how much in trouble every people so. Yeah, yeah. But I know Perla is uh, very regarded in Juarez and one of the open voices of, uh, and that, that's another point, theater especially, uh, but also the visual arts often deal with issues that, that you don't read about in the media anymore. Because mm -hmm. the media just, for whatever reasons, they, they I mean, not, not only Juarez and other places too. Uh, like Tamaulipas, the media doesn't really report on any 
This is just just south of the in in in, um, in the South Texas border, right? right? right, what, right. What's what's the situation like there, and and, and how are the artists uh, responding? Or? That was kind of the most difficult stretch of border for me to work in because the the level of, of fear in the cities is is, is pre still pretty high, and then my freedom of movement is kind of limited. You know, you don't. But I'm always taken care of by the artists because they know what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. Some of those cities are still in the grip of uh, violence. You know? and, and how do they function, these artists, in a place like uh, in a place like Nuevo Laredo or or, uh, or Matamoros? They function very well. I mean, that that's that's the amazing part. There, there is a, a lot of there's an almost vibrant uh, artist life behind the behind what we see, you know, what we get to hear from the media. And, and yeah. do they themselves feel uh, threatened because of the work they're doing? Uh, not really, because most well, you get yes in in, in the normal daily, uh, like anybody else. Let's put it like that. But not necessarily because of what they're doing. Uh, most of them tell me that as long as it is art or, or it looks as like art, there is really nobody who feels threatened by that on the other side. You know, so uh, journalism is not liked, but the art is. The art is, is yes. tolerated. Tolerated, well. let's, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. that's at least for way, at least for now. It, yes. And so, th what what sorts of subjects do they cover in their in their art? Do they do they um, do they talk about uh, the, the the violence in their works? Yes, I met a lot of artists, and I don't want to <coughs> name specific names right now. Um, <coughs> and and but I really have I, I met the whole range of, of from from people who don't deal with any situation at all, just do art for the arts, you know, colorful, playful arts, and, and, and many of them are very political. And uh, I've seen art that, that pinpoints certain problems, like as if you read read it, you know, it's just but in, in pictures. And everything in between, a lot of performances that deal with certain situations, and the situations are also very different in different places, so we have and Juarez has different problems than, than Matamoros or Tijuana. Mm -hmm. you know, Tijuana actually seems to be the, the city that uh, is the farthest away from very bad days. So, well, well tell us about your, your time in Tijuana and, and how the artists got, got started there, the ones that you that you met. The most I mean, Tijuana is the place I had been most to. I've been there four or five times. I had two shows there myself, and, and I'm, I'm almost, almost became a part of the scene there, which wasn't really my intention, but that, so it happened, and I really loved Tijuana. And uh, what was really interesting was the, the whole city was completely deserted and empty in 2008, 2009, especially the, the main artery, which is uh, Avenida de la Revolución. Avenida de la Revolución in Tijuana, see, okay. Which was used this to like be a tourist, tourist stretch, and it was absolutely <coughs> empty, deserted, and boarded up, and there's these passages that, that pasajes <coughs> that uh, used to be old markets and tourist uh, shops and all that. Uh, they're almost like, like under underground cities. I mean, they're, they're, they're huge in part. And so the artists, uh, now that I came back in 2012, I mean, all these places started to open again. They're all galleries and cafes, little tiny cafes, sometimes with a little espresso machine, and that's basically it. Mm -hmm. uh, usually very young people who, who reorganize the city, at least downtown Tijuana. Uh, and they all say, like, we used to do all this for tourists, which th they're still not coming. I mean, they're single tourists, but you don't see tourism really in that sense. Like in the numbers before 2008? Not, not even, I mean, it's like day and night. Yeah. And uh, But they say, no, we, we, we want to have fun too. You know, we, we don't do it for the tourists, we do it for Tijuana, for ourselves. So. Mm -hmm. and, and there's an, an amazing uh, life sprung up in, in downtown Tijuana. It's just, just great to see. And some of the, the, the artists are, are, are functioning in, in these spaces yes. and, and creating in these spaces. Most of the spaces are actually occupied by artists. Mm -hmm. And again, lots of them very young artists. So. And you, say, you, you, you say that some of the tourists that do venture to come across are coming to check out what, what, what these artists are doing. Definitely. That's, I would say, the main tourist attraction besides the food, which is uh, <laughs> Maybe even the, the maybe even more important than the art, but uh, both of them. And I call I have a few chefs and cooks in my project mm -hmm. from Tijuana because I think they're artists too, and they have a real positive influence on on what's going on. 
So it's, it seems like they're, um, like for some of them, they, they might struggle to, to make their art marketable, right? Yes. To, to, to sell it. But it seems like there's a community value to what they're doing. Uh, can, can, can you talk about that a little? That seems to be the bigger point than the market value. I mean, the problem is, is like with <laughs> the rest of us, I mean, somehow this all has to work in a in financial sense. Uh, if there is no money at some point, then, then things start to fall apart. Everybody has to eat and pay the rent, and even those cheap places in, in near, near the Avenida are costing some rent. You know. So that is a problem, but I believe that, especially in the case of Tijuana, if they keep doing what they're doing and if the situation stays the way it is, you know, you, you never know if it goes up or down again. They really have a, a great chance to attract a lot of interest. And are they also helping certain communities um, heal after a, a, after these difficult years? Yes. Well, and how did you how did you see that? Uh, I see that especially in in the teaching. I mean, there's I, I hardly meet any artist along the border who doesn't teach in any kind of form, uh, and usually children. And I guess like anywhere else, I mean, that's our biggest chance is to, and, and, and they have in part going through the same traumatic uh, periods of time than the, the grown-ups have. So, uh, and I see that all over the place that people teach, 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 uh, and, and that is wonderful to see. And then um, you also say that uh, that they help kind of reclaim spaces that were once spaces where uh, maybe a violent act took place, and and they start coming out uh, and 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 say painting a mural, and kind of the community right. gets a little confidence because of their presence. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the activity alone. I mean, that people are out and doing stuff, painting murals. Uh, just visited uh, a muralist Melo in in, in Juarez. Just the activity that people are out there painting walls. I mean, just looking at that and the presence of color instead of crumbling. You know, yeah. it's yeah. it just works. Uh, my, my, my sense is art works, and not only on the border but any, anywhere else too. Mm -hmm. So places, and that that is where I come back to my upbringing in Germany, and what was behind that wall was was gray. I mean, uh, it's a t totally different it was story. What now? What, what gray. I mean, there was, was there was only gray. It's a complete different story because that was a communist state behind the the wall, and uh, this is colorful Mexico, you know. <laughs> so the story is a different one. But what I saw behind the wall in Germany as a child was nothing but gray. There was no, uh, and the art was government regulated and all that. So there wasn't really any freedom of the arts at all. And, and how is it different here then? Now, 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 and this this very different wall in a very different part of the world. Well, the wall itself really reminds me of, uh, especially Berlin, where we had that incredible physical big wall. And uh, there's a place in Tijuana. It's called the Casa del Tunnel. I had an exhibition there, and on the roof of that Casa del Tunnel, at night, you look down on the border, which is right. It's like ten yards from the border. And you have all these high security lamps. Uh, it looks like you're in a state prison or something, except you can walk out of it. Uh, it, it really reminds me of, of a scene in, in, in West Berlin, in looking at East Berlin. Well, and, and having traveled uh, to other parts of the world and in the interior of Mexico, how did the border strike you as, as different? What, what, um, what kind of an impression did it make on you? Uh, it has been a long time that I had traveled in, in other parts of Mexico, but what is totally clear is that the, the border region is, is kind of its own country, I mean, and it's very different from the west to the east. I mean, every, every region is, is very different, but all have that border in common. And uh, I asked one, one artist in, in, in El Paso, actually, who I think was born in Juarez, I said, uh, well, so where are you from? And he said, I'm from La Frontera. And I just love that for what I'm trying to say, you know, that people just don't care on what side they're born. They're, they're just, they're from here, you know, mm -hmm. from La Frontera. And, and mm -hmm. uh, many people say it's like its own, it's not Mexico, it's not America, it's its own kind of, you know. And, and, and how, how have, they, how have uh, you been uh, welcomed as someone that's coming from, uh, from the Northeast, originally from Germany? Uh, what kind of a welcome have you received? Uh, uh, enormous. I mean, the, the support for the project 
if, if I had been here without the project, uh, I, I guess it would have been very nice too, because the people are just, just enormously nice. But proposing this project to people and trying to, to win them, to be part in it, and, and it is like almost a, a self-running, uh, people just love it, you know, because there's not, apparently not that many media that pays any attention to the cultural part of the border region at all. So I, wherever I go, people are like totally astonished that, that I would not be interested in the violence, not be interested in illegal immigration or in all the issues that we normally uh, get to see. So that, that is a, it's, it's really touching. And it's always difficult to go into a city that I don't know on the border. I don't know what to expect, but it's always as difficult to leave because I made so many good friends in, in <laughs> like very little time. Well, let's bring up um, one more photo um, so we can uh, get sure. a glimpse and, and, you, and let you tell us about it. Uh, here it is. Uh, what, what is this photo? Oh, uh, that's Alvarez in uh, Tecate. He is a well-known, he's a well-known artist in all over Mexico and, and abroad. And he is an art teacher at the University of Tecate, or the University of Baja California. And he has this amazing studio there. I mean, he's, he's just a fantastic. What's he working on there? He is actually holding a little piglet that he created from clay. I mean, he's just a, uh, he's good in every discipline. He does huge sculptures, he does paintings, he does, uh, he, he, and he has a stack of, I think, 20 or 30 of the jeans shirts in the corner. He wears the same clothes <laughs> every day, but they're always new. <laughs> just an amazing character. Wonderful, wonderful. So, um, so then, tell us uh, how um, how is your how is your project uh, funded, and what kind of support do you? I receive? got a, a, the first few visits to Tijuana. I've, I've uh, funded myself. I'm a professional photographer. And I work on movie sets and I work for magazines. I do stories often about artists. Mm -hmm. uh, that's somehow I, how I got this idea because I, I work a lot in the cultural fields. Do uh, you know life stories about? artists for, for German magazines, international magazines. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I earn enough money and I can put it into my project, I do that. Uh, this year I realized that I need much more time on the border than I could finance myself. So I wrote a proposal to a German foundation mm -hmm. and they funded uh, about half the project. And then I did a, a, an online fundraising uh, campaign the Kickstarter, but I did it on Indiegogo, it's called. It's a website where you put up a video about your project and then you ask the public to participate with small amounts. Uh, How's it going? Well, that, that campaign ended two or three months ago and it went very well, so I got the other half of the, for the project. Okay. So I raised enough money to travel for two or three months and uh, I wish I could do another two or three months because I, you know, it, it's very difficult to find an end because there's so many artists that I still could visit. I have so far visited, I think, 140 artists along the border, maybe 150. Wow. And uh, that's still just a small portion. And, and that's sometimes hard to leave a place knowing there's still 20, 30 more interesting artists left. And so if we want to see more of your photos, um, uh, where, where can we find them? stefanfalke.com is one of the, uh, is my website, and then I created a website for the project, which is called borderartists.com. You've also got a Facebook page, I right? I got a Facebook page that is called La Frontera, Artists Along the U.S.-Mexican Border. That is a very, becomes a very popular uh, page because uh, people tend to, I don't know, especially in Mexico, Facebook is used like crazy, so I actually organized the whole project through almost through, entirely through Facebook. Okay. And uh, so I thought there's a need to create the page for that and so everybody can so check it out. We can go on there and like, and like the project. Absolutely, please <laughs> like it and uh, keep. <laughs> and check out the photos. Stay yeah, posted there's some, there's because some there's a lot of stuff there. coming. I mean, I'm, I'm planning to publish a book about it. I'm planning exhibitions along the border. So I'm, I hope that many people visit the page often and, and uh, keep uh, themselves informed about what's going on in the future. Great. This project is not over. So. Great.
Great, great. Well, um, uh, just to just to wrap up, uh, tell us uh, where you're headed to next and, and what your plans are. I'm uh, yeah, just coming from Juarez and I'm going to um, Nogales, which is really the last biggest city on the border. I've uh, left out, unfortunately, and that's a, a money issue. I've left out a lot of smaller places, which I hope through a next fundraising effort uh, I might be able to come back and do them too because I don't really want to leave any place out. So I'm going to Nogales and then I'm coming back to Juarez because Juarez is so big I've only spent two weeks there which is really nothing. Uh, so I will be there for I guess another week. I will have a, a lecture about the project at the Rubin Center in El Paso on February 5th. So that's a little presentation. I think it's six at night. And so that's another reason why I have to come back. Luckily, I love doing that, and uh, so I'll be in the area for a while. Very good. Well, um, thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank and, you for uh, having me. Thank you very and, much. And your work is fantastic, and, and I hope uh, our viewers will take the time to, to uh, check it out because it's, it's really fun and it's really colorful. And like you said, um, uh, it's, uh, not e even for those of us that live here, um, we haven't quite... Uh, um, spent the time, uh, and we don't really know the artists that. Uh, I think they all deserve our attention. I mean, not only mine with the project, but they, they, there are so many great artists and, and other artists who are very courageous. Uh, there's a lot of people out there whom we don't pay attention to, and I think they totally deserve it. Very good. Well, thank you so much for, for coming and uh, for safe, safe travels. Thank you. Very good.